Shalom, shalom, and welcome. Give me just one second, guys. <laughs> the, uh, get uh, oh, another song tried to start. Welcome, everyone, to today's class. All right. I got two computers going, so give me just a moment. Going to be sharing some codes on that other machine. Welcome, everybody, to today's class. It is March 22nd, and we are just a couple of days from the Looney Solar Passover, at least. And, uh, you know, a lot going on in the skies there. Welcome. Everybody doing okay? Good? All right, so I spent a couple hours a day, you know, praying about today's class. And uh, it's been an emotional day. A lot of crying, a lot of uh, supplication and talking to the father about, you know, what's going on in the world. I was a little disturbed today when I, I saw a report of something that's going on in, in Russia, in Moscow. That's that's very concerning to me. And so that kind of started my day off with a little bit of anxiety. Uh, and so I began to, you know, pray and, and to cry out to the father. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm certainly feeling the urgency of the time. And I don't think it is by happenstance or accident that each one of you have come into to this experience and this journey uh, with me. I think it's uh, everything in its, in its time and that the Father has ordained it. And so um, I started thinking about that today and the importance of this class and, and what we're learning here and what you guys are potentially going to do on down the road. In wherever wherever you are, in your in your online com community, in your local community, wherever that is, I know and I feel it in my spirit that the Father is going to use you in a mighty way. So, I got to be upfront with you. I, I got to tell you, um, when when you tap into these kind of things and you're walking in the spirit realm, and today we're in this class, we're going to be talking about the ephod, and I'm going to be explaining to you the the purpose of the ephod and how it relates to the Bible codes. And how you have a connection now to what the high priest was doing uh, 3,000 years ago in the Holy of Holies when he would put on the ephod and go before the Father. He was the only one. You hear what I'm saying to you? Not everybody can do this. And not everybody is called to do this. He went into the Holy of Holies and would speak to the Father. The Father would respond, not in an audible voice, but through um, the, the breastplate. The ephod that was on the chest above the heart of the high priest and had the names of all the tribes on all the stones there uh, and all the 22 letters of the alphabet, by the way, uh, were in those stones. And so when the high priest would ask the father questions and he's standing be be before the holy fire, the flame would reflect the letters onto the wall and the father would communicate with the letters. He cannot communicate with us audibly uh, in a sense that, you know, there are consequences to that. If, if you folks remember when the when the children of Israel came to the foot of Sinai and the father spoke audibly, it shook the whole earth shook. They heard trumpets and shofars and thundering and lightning and they were terrified. Right. So when the father speaks audibly to us, the whole world knows it. Because there's a consequence to um, him speaking, right? So it is my belief and, and my understanding that the reason why he gave the high priest the ephod is so he could communicate and it would, wouldn't cause such a ruckus. I'm, I'm only using logic to, to kind of, uh, you know, quantify why he would do this. But there is no doubt the ephod was designed for a functional purpose. It wasn't just bling that the high priest was wearing because it was covered in jewels. These Each one of these stones had the names of the tribes, which consisted of all of the Hebrew letters. Okay, so the whole alphabet was on the chest of the high priest. And not only that, he had something called an Urim and Thurim that was on the shoulder, right close to the ear, right? It's representative of something in that. I'm going deep today, guys, and, and listen, this is not scripted. I didn't have a lesson plan uh, per se, other than me praying to the Father and asking, what should I tell him today? Okay, 
So we're going to talk about the ephod. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to show how it's applicable, applicable to each one of you. Because when you're doing these codes, you're walking in a very holy thing. Okay, this is like going before the Father and, and communicating on a different level. Now, you know, here today in Christianity and other religions, people claim to hear the voice of God all the time. But don't you know that there are tricksters out there? The demons want to trick you, right? So how do you know? Here's a, th here's a question. How do you know you're hearing your voice or the voice of the enemy or the voice of the Father. It could be only one of those three. Everybody understand that? Right? I'm leading you somewhere in this in this teaching, in this lesson today about the ephod. How can we test all things? Remember, we're commanded to test the spirit, to test all things. Right? And I can tell you over the years that I've been doing this, and it's been 15 years that I've been on YouTube doing this, that I have seen many occurrences that we can use the 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 ephod the the codes to confirm a matter to get to the bottom of something okay and so that's the the point of this course where i'm going to be teaching you how to do that but before i get into the uh the the lesson today let me just stop right here before i forget and pray over you i see everybody's now congregating and coming into the room right Good thing we're recording now because people will be like, what did I miss? <laughs> I want to stop and pray. We're going to get into the vocabulary I have for you today. And it's a little more than 10, you guys. Okay, because I wanted to up the ante with you. I feel the urgency of what we're doing here. And you guys are going to do some great things in, in this course. I, I believe the Father, I've, I've prayed for each one of you that he would, he would reveal himself in a mighty way in his word. And in this in journey that you're in okay so i'm expecting that to to be a uh, something that that manifests in each and every one of you so uh to to expedite some things i told you i was going to give you uh 10 vocabulary words and i really don't want to overwhelm you but i think you can handle it because the, the, the today's words are are fairly um you know we're not going anything complex for the most part uh, it's three and four, you know, even some two letter words that you're learning today. Right. So uh, easy vocabulary today, but a little more than 10. OK, and I, I think it's like 14 or 15 or something like that, that I'm going to give you. And then uh, we're going to get into um, what I have for you today about the ephod and how it's applicable, applicable to what you're going to learn here and how, how, you know, it applies to your own life, because um, there were some times. In my journey in this, you guys, and that that's another point I want to point out to you guys, is, is you're going to be walking in some spiritual warfare when you're doing this. You understand what I'm say, saying to you? If you were in the ocean and you and you were thrashing about, right, because uh, maybe you're, you're sinking or something like that, and there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on, you're making a big splash, right, in that ocean, and you're going to draw some sharks, Right. Um, the analogy I'm trying to bring this home for you, you may draw some sharks in your life, some, some demons, some, some, uh, trials in your life. When you walk in the spirit like this, I have to be up front with you and warn you on that. Okay. So you need to know that, that once you start searching codes and you cross over to, to, to that place where the father's revealing deep and, and hidden things, and the scriptures tell us that he did this in, in, on purpose. Some people will tell you the father never hides anything. That's a lie. He hides for his people, for his children. And it's an honor for you to search those things out. But when you do that, you will draw spiritual warfare into your life. And you'll see it manifesting all around you. Okay, so just be warned of that. And don't, don't be afraid. I'm not trying to run you off. Just be aware of that. Be prayed up. At every time you get into the codes and in, into his word, because that's what, what you're getting into, his word. And on a deep level, when you do that, expect some waves to happen, okay? Just know that, but be prayed up, all right? Abba, Father, we're so thankful, Father, for this opportunity to gather in your mighty name, Father. And I just ask, Father, that you would open up the hearts and the minds of each person here 
that you would reveal yourself and your truths and your hidden things in a mighty way to each one here, Father, that you would keep them protected from the enemy with your angels at all times, Father. We just give you all the glory and the praise uh, for what you're doing in this place. We call up all these things in heaven and earth in the name of Yeshua. Amen. All right, you guys. And uh, we're still got people coming into the class. No worries. You're not missed anything. It's all recorded for those that are just coming in right now. Um, I'm just going to keep flowing with uh, the Holy Spirit and, and go into what I got for you today. So if you got your notebooks, let's get those out because we're going to go in right into your vocabulary today and then right into the lesson. All right. So we got a lot to cover. I'm sure it's going to bless you. The Father is going to. So, uh, go ahead. Jonathan, I, I, I have had a lot of difficulty with the word Isaac because it wasn't simple, right? It was it, it was a different spelling totally, so I couldn't get that. So okay. I just want to tell you that was the one I struggled with the most. Yeah, okay. So Yitzhak, Yitzhak yes. is Isaac in Hebrew. That is a yadi, a, a yod, a zadi, a chet, and a, a kuf. Um, and, and I'll review that in, in uh, today's lesson. A um, little okay, more easier thanks. words today. Um, last okay. week was names. Okay, so we're gonna we, we gave you a bunch of names of that you're gonna see over and over in the scriptures, and and that was one of them. So we'll review that one for the sake of Sita there, and uh, we will keep on flowing. So um, let me just get to the translator here. We're gonna use that as a as a teaching tool. There. And uh, you guys make sure you got your everything muted because you might have some feedback or we may have some feedback here. I got everybody muted. All right. Here we go. Very first word today. Is, or, or, so let's review. Let's just review that one name that she, she just uh, talked about with Isaac. Isaac or Yitzhak in Hebrew. It's, it's Yod. Zadi. Chet and the Kuf. Isaac. Four letters. It's, it's a name you're going to see over and over again in, in the scriptures there, okay? All right, so getting into the, the, the new vocabulary for this week, we're going to, the first word is father, right? Very easy word. It's Av. Aleph Bet is father. Aleph Bet. And it is the root word of my father. So if we added a yod, avi, avi in Hebrew, in, in a lot of, uh, you know, there's a uh, nickname that children will call their father avi, right? Avi, which is my father, right? So av is your first word, father, av, aleph, bet. All right. Very next word, it's also very simple, is mother. And then is ima. Aleph, mem, aleph. Mother. Now, mother can also be truncated with, we, we're we going to talk about that a little further into the course, where uh, in Hebrew, to simplify things, you'll often see truncated where um, yodes and valves and sometimes olives are dropped off because it's implied. The reader understands um, uh, the implication here. And, and so if we do that, um, with a final mem, mem, is also mother, as you can see there. It's also a conjunction to um, if. If would be a conjunction Again, the context of the conversation or whatever you're reading would tell you which way to use that. If you saw this in the middle of a phrase or something like that, and the context is not a mother, you know it's talking about if. It's a, it's a, a very, very much a conjunctive word, right? But it's also mother. So, ima, aleph, mem, aleph, mother is your second word. Next word is brother and that's Aleph Chet Aleph Chet Ach Ach or Achi 
my brother. If you said my brother, remember the, the Yod we put on Av, Avi or Av to make my father. Same applies here. And my brother would be Achi with a Yod. My brother. See how easy that was? You went from a two-letter to a three-letter phrase from brother to my brother, Achi, right? There's I have a question, Jonathan. For Ima, why are we saying Aleph? Shouldn't it be E instead of A? Now you're saying Ama, right? Ima, Ima. Ima. So where is the E? It's it it's um. I don't know how to explain that. Oh, my sister, we're, now we're getting into grammar. Um, but there's different pronunciations. Ima, I'm okay. a, I mean. It, it, I guess I'll make a class where we look at the different pronunciations of, of pairings of letters. But like I've told many of you in the, in the interview, uh, when you decided to take this class, we're not going to worry about grammar. I'm trying to simplify these things to a biblical okay. understanding. Okay. So we're not going yeah, to. No, no, need, no, no need to explain. I think it's just the consonants. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that's a, and, and the computer it, doesn't care yeah. the pronunciation. Um, and I should okay. have told each one of you that this is not like a modern Hebrew course where I'm going to be teaching you how to order a falafel in downtown Jerusalem. It's, that, that's not what this course is about. You're going to learn biblical Hebrew. So you get you, and essentially you'll be able to read your scriptures in the Hebrew and, and see and understand those words. OK, Um and, and so we're not going to get really deep. We can if, if you guys really want to get deep into it, but I don't think it's necessary because um, many of you just want to search codes. The computer doesn't care how you pronounce these words, right? It's it's about the sequence of the letters and the numbers, all right? So forgive me for not going deeper for you. Um, there's other Hebrew courses online that does, and um, they're a little bit harder, but I'm trying to make this very simplified for you guys and something doable. And I don't want to intimidate anyone about learning a, a new language and, and not taking the course. OK, because I think um, the enemy will use that to discourage people. You guys can do this. Um, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Right. So the fact that he chose me to do this is mind boggling to me. So I know if I can do this, you can as well. OK. All right. So next word is, uh, 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 it's very similar to this, achot, achot, so aleph, chet, vav, tav, which is coming up nurse, but it's really sister, so it's a, a dual usage of that word, achot would be sister, and that is your fourth word. Aleph, Chet, Vav, Tav. And again, if I move too fast for you guys, all of this is recorded. You can watch it in the replay and uh, pause the video and get every one of those. For the sake of time, I want to keep moving. The next one is Elohim, Allah, Lamed, He, Yod, Final Men. Elohim is a very general word. As you can see there, it has God, um, God's, it is actually a plural for, form. Uh, Elohai would be the singular form, but you'll see this over and over in your scriptures, the word Elohim, and uh, it in every take, it's, it means God. It's not the proper name of the Father. It's, uh, it's a descriptive term, of, of, right? So Elohim is your fifth word. Next word is house, and that would be be uh, bait, home, bet, yod, tav, three letters. You'll often see house of Israel, house of Judah, house of Ephraim in in the scriptures. So you'll see this this three letter term over and over again. Right? It means house. Ne very next word, uh, and and this is something we're going to learn about today, the ephod, and that is spelled Aleph, Pei, Dalad, the ephod, and even though it's it, uh, misspelled there, and, and sometimes you can even spell it with a Vav, maybe that's what it wants me to do, 
Um, but in the scriptures, you'll see it truncated, right? Just like I was talking about the vavs, the olives, the yods. Um, a lot of times they'll, they'll be missing from a word and it's implied. So that's called truncated and it's to simplify. Okay. But uh, for the sake of, of biblical Hebrew, it's aleph, pe, dalad, right? And remember how last week I told you about pe and fe, the twin sisters that not that are not exactly alike. When you see that letter in the middle of a word, it's usually f sound, like a fe sound, right? Um, so it means vest, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment of what that is. It's actually something that's very functional. Um, if we put a hay on that, it's the ephod, right? Just one letter, the ephod. All right, very next word is Adon. Adon is master. This is where they get Adonai. So if we if we had uh, Adonai, the Lord, every time you see it, uh, the Lord in your scriptures, it implies that it's Adonai, right? Many times it's it's actually yod heh vav -Heh, but they put the Lord there uh, to replace the name of the Father, right? And I've spoken about that. He did it some almost 7,000 times in our King James Bible. Adon. Adon. Final uh, noon. So that's Aleph. Dalad, Vav, Noon. And notice those, that Vav and Noon next together. You, you can see the difference between the two. So you, that, you know that second one is a Noon. It's the final Noon. It means um, Master. I don't like using the word Lord um, because of the implications there. That, that word in Hebrew is Baal, right? And the Father commands us not to call him that. So we call him Adon, right? Uh, if you're going to call him Master. Very next word is Adam. Adam, which is man. It is the name of the first man, Adam, which comes from the, 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 the word Adama, which means the ground or the earth, right? He's made from the ground, right? So uh, his name is Adam, Adam, but it also means a person. And as Google is pointing out here, the other um, way you can say man is ish. And that's also one of your, your, your uh, that's interesting. And it has both of them here right now. Ish we'll talk about in just a minute. All right. But th for this word, it is Adam, Aleph, Dalad, Mem is your word. Very next one uh, is based on that. Adam ma, which means ground or land. You can see the root word of Adam in there. Aleph, Dalad, Mem, Hay is land, earth. Very next word. Another word for man is ish. Ish. See how it has here? It's showing us both uh, usage of man or a man, Adam and Ish. Either way, it's the same thing. And you see the same thing in, in English and probably in other languages as well, where you can have different words that mean the same thing. Understand? Right? Ish. Aleph, Yod, Shin. Very next one is Isha. Isha is wife or woman. Aleph, Shin, Hey. Isha. And the last two, Ben, which is son. Bet, final noon. Now, if we wanted to say children, Ben would be the root of that, and we would add a yod, right? My son or my children. Or we could, you know, if we said children of Israel,
you see it's B'nai Yisrael, right? Or my son with the Yod. Ben. So that's that's Ben. What's the difference between Ben and Bar? Bar? Right. Like um, Bar Mitzvah, Bar Abbas, um, Bar Joseph. Bar is the Aramaic um, iteration of that word. Uh, yeah. bar, bar is the Aramaic form? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking oh, at about you. that too. It, especially when we get into the Peshitta, you'll see you'll see differences between um, the the biblical Hebrew that we're looking at now, which is based off of uh, um, you know basically history and time as time has passed, it's changed because of the Yiddish and and uh, some other things. But um, uh, you, you know, language languages become uh, start to morph, sort of like the Creole you get with the French. So you got French in France, but then the French in Louisiana with the Creole, it's a different kind of French, right? So right. It's the same thing with Hebrew where it kind of over time it progressed into something else but um the aramaic will be early this will be the form that yeshua used by the way and that's Gal what it, yeah the Gal the galilean aramaic uses a hebrew construct um and it's kind of like it's kind of like the difference between spanish and portuguese they're very similar but they they have a different dialect like jonathan was explaining yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. I just no, 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 no. Great explanation there. there. Great explanation. Yeah, and a great so question, much. by the way, that she just had. Very, you know, because there's a little bit of confusion on some of these Hebrew words that some people are learning, and uh, they're both correct, right? So, um, cool thing is, we're going to be looking at the Peshitta, which is the Aramaic, uh, a lot. Um, you'll see, you'll see, you know, slight differences, but with words like Shamayim, which is the heavens. And Shamaya is the same root word, but they're different, right? Um, your last word is daughter, but it also means a girl, but daughter. Bet Tav is the two letters. And I think that and is like. Go ahead. And they say that they say that bot. Is that how that's said? Bot, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so bot mitzvahs for the girl, bar mitzvahs for the boy. Exactly. Your and your bet and your bots. Exactly. Yeah. And you're gonna learn the differences in those and all those words. So you'll recognize uh, that there's feminines and, and masculines in Hebrew, just like in Spanish. In Spanish, you'll have la uh nina and and um, El Nina, right? That that kind of thing, right? So there's there's a masculine and a feminine, and I'm sure I'm butchering that because I don't have a mastery of Spanish. Don't 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 get it confused. I just know that there's a masculine and feminine, uh, a feminine in those other languages as well, where um, you, you say the word differently, right? El Nino y la Nina. There you go. Right. Exactly. El y la. Right. Okay. And there's consonants that make them. Right, exactly. And there's a lot of mixture of Spanish and Hebrew, you know, because Hebrew went to Iberia, Spain. Okay. Yeah. Is it the word Iberia come from some type of form of Hebrew? Absolutely. Iberia. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what I mean. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, Yibrit, which is Hebrew uh, for Hebrew, is where Iberia comes from. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Um, um, yeah, yeah. All right, so now I want to trans transition in, into the ephod, you guys, because um, that that is a, a, a huge connection here. And then from that, I'm going to show you a couple of codes that the Father revealed to me about me in a very low time. And it was at a time where I was basically using the, the, the uh, codes as an ephod. OK, I was seeking the father very much like um, uh, is it uh, Joshua who put out the um, the fleece to ask the father a question or to, to do this or to do that. Right. And he put out a fleece to get an answer. Right. It's the very same concept. That was Gideon. Gideon. I think, right. That's right. Yeah. It was Gideon. I don't know why I said Joshua. Right. So 
Um, we can also use the ephod to at, in your prayer life to ask the Father a question, and He will answer in in a, in a very profound way. And I'm going to show you a couple of codes um, that He used to to essentially. And I didn't publish these uh, really on YouTube because it was a it was like a personal confirmation for me. But I'm going to use it as a teaching opportunity with you today because you guys are going to be able to do the same thing. I'm going to teach you how to do that, how to use these codes as an ephod in your prayer life and talk to the Father and discern from what you're hearing. Does that make sense? This is a way that you can test what you're hearing, whether it's from you, the enemy, or the Father. Because the enemy's going to come and he's going to try to confuse you. I saw this at the election time when, when there was some 400 false prophets all around the world and some of them saying very bizarre things like, you know, Kat Kerr talking about playing checkers with Jesus all the time. And Jesus had told her that Donald Trump was going to be president again and save this nation. A second term, right? Co consecutive second term. And on and on and on and on with all these false prophets. And what the, the father revealed to me in the codes and, and what he was telling me was he wasn't going to lift one finger to stop what was about to happen. And I had told people for 11 months before the election, Joe Biden was going to be president. And it was not going to be Donald Trump. Y'all was going to teach this nation a lesson, right? How did I test that? How could I be so accurate in that other than confirming a, a word? Like, so if you get a word of knowledge, you need to confirm that in some way, right? And so if, if the Father can reveal to you a place to go, and reveal something that's obviously a, a confirmation from him. The enemy cannot do that. He doesn't have access to the scriptures like this. He may have access to the surface text, um, but he does not have access uh, like you and I with the ephod and be able to search his text, right? So um, let me cue up this video from uh, Rabbi Glazerson on the ephod. Then we're going to look at an ephod code, and I'm going to uh, take you into some methodology of how I used it as an ephod and how it was an encouragement to me. Because there were times, you guys, where I almost gave this up. And I've been doing this 15 years on YouTube. And um, there, like I said, you're going to come under attack. And um, I don't know why my camera keeps turning. You're going to come under attack sometimes because of the things that you're searching out. And it may get tough. And, you know, you, you might need encouragement. You, you you may need to sit down with the Father, right? And so that's what I'm I'm trying to drive home for you, um, how we can use this as a tool. That's essentially what the ephod was for the, the high priest. It wasn't about bling. It was a tool that had a function, right? It's very significant to what we're doing here. We see just now what it is exactly. This is in Mr. Marzolo. And there you go introduce me in watchers. And then you will see really the explanation about the ephod. And then you will see very interesting tables, many of them, which really shows the connection of the ephod and the Bible code. So our code, which is really very important to know because there's we have different tables or different places in which if it appears with codes, it means there is connection. Now I know some of you guys can't understand. He's got a very broken English when he talks, but he's basically saying he's going to show you the connection to the ephod and the Bible codes, okay? And like the ephod, so Hebrew letters indicated to the highly the high priest. The answer, so also to our course today and to darkness. So let us see now first part of these watchers, and then we see the tables. So this is from watchers, Richard Shaw, pin lights. It looks like an apron for the high priest. An apron. Yeah. 
And and this, you can, guys can go and look at this um, kind of stuff on your own, you know, uh, researching the ephod. But that's basically what it was. It was a breastplate that went on the chest of the high priest over the heart, and it had stones for each one of the twelve tribes. With the, the names were inscribed on each one, right? And when he went, it also had the urim and thurim on the shoulder. Close to the ear. And that's important because I'm going to read to you Isaiah 30 and what it says there and how that applies today. It's close to the ear. So this had a function. It, it wasn't just to make his, his outfit look nice, right? It actually had a function to it. It can happen, right? And this was connected to a breastplate. Now this breastplate was folded and inside this like a pocket inside was a parchment with God's name because on this breastplate which was joined to the ephod there were 12 stones and the names of the 12 tribes were engraved on it and then when a question was asked by the high priest then the letters of the tribes I mean those letters which have the answer came out so the, the high priest so what he just said was he would go into the Holy of Holies with, with this breastplate and, and it's before the holy fire and he would at, he would verbally ask the Father questions and usually a list of questions, not just one question, a litany of questions because this is once a year that they had the opportunity to ask the Father a direct question and get a direct answer and in the in the miracle of what would take place is the letters would illuminate and and okay so imagine one of the stones is a diamond right right you know how shiny a diamond is and when a flame or a light shines through it right it's if you have anything engraved on that it's going to reflect onto a surface so each one of these stones these precious gems were engraved and when the light or or the fire um, the light from the fire illuminated on that. It would reflect a letter onto the wall and the, and the high priest could read a statement from the father. Does everybody understand? Okay. This is the function of the high priest of, of the ephod. Find out through the letters, which were shining, lightning, the answer to the question. We know that the ephod was lost to us thousands of years ago. Is it possible to, that maybe someday, um, we'll find the ephod. Maybe, like, uh, like other parts of the temples, we know, we don't know something in the Vatican, we don't know, but uh, <laughs> you have to get them back. They are hidden somewhere, no doubt. Do you think that the Torah codes may be a type of a modern-day ephod? What uh, What can you tell us? Now, this was an amazing really, thing that we found when we put the Hebrew word called Torah, which is really Torah code, then we put the word effort, it came there three times. It came exactly on the same line with the word called Torah, clearly showing connection between the Torah code and the... So one of the very first codes, as he just showed you there, um, that was found by the rabbis to confirm a connection was the, the, the phrase Torah codes uh, that he found. And obviously... We have in one line, which is uh, really the the um, construction of the ephod, the very birth of the ephod runs right through the bottom of this. Now, anytime you see a relative, uh, uh, okay, so the context of the of the code is vertical. Anytime you see something running through it in the plain text, because we have some thirty thousand scriptures, and any one of them could appear right here. But this one does, right? So the significance of that is very high. It's very significant, telling us there's a connection to the ephod and the Torah codes. Everybody understand? Connection between the Torah code and the ephod. And then what we have also, the dates, interesting, when it started coming to the world, I mean, the idea of, of the codes, they knew about it. it okay, so the Torah codes became public in this year, and I have to look it up. This is the Hebrew year 
57, 36. This is when uh, it be, it became very profound in the word and and, and uh, world. And it, and a lot has to do with the internet, you guys. So that when the internet age came along, especially when I found that it, we were in the internet age, um, it really took off. So we're seeing a direct connection um, from our early searches from the from the uh, rabbis uh, to the ephod. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-six. Then, interestingly, it came also this year, and pin light came there. Unbelievable. Pin light came there. Minimal in the Torah. Uh, unbelievable. Really showing. It's amazing. That pin light supposed to be now the, very much involved. The significance of pin light, you guys, if those who don't know, that's Rick Shaw's uh, company who who produced a lot of these videos for the rabbi, um, the Watchers series from L.A. Marzulli. Uh, Rick Shaw had a lot to do with that. That is pin light. And that's why he was finding pin light in the code, because uh, he he has served a purpose for the father in in revealing these codes to the world. OK, amazing. It came every very small amount of letter in between pin bites so it, it was a minimal so I mean all together you know this table shows that Torah codes are connected to the ephod as it appears so many times with the same story and also it appeared with the word Urim Betumim with the lights and completeness I mean Urim Betumim it says this was the parchment with the names of God which was called Urim Tumim so this also came in the table there which is exactly the idea of the talk of the info the talk, talk yeah. which showing the um, letters. You guys, the umi and duming are the stones that are on the shoulders, right next to the ear. Okay, so uh, that's what he's talking about now. Right. The answer, the meaning of things is this. The book of Esther is not part of the talk. Now, let us see the tables about the food as you saw some of them but there are more so let us see them now coming in a very interesting way we show one by one and we understand what it means so this what you have here is really skip as you can see Torah code coming Torah code skip which is the basis of which is able to look and then you have the word soften code, interesting. This is a year when the Ron Wissen and Professor Rip start working on this, it was 5776, which was 1986. And this is a year when the document really came out by Pinlight, Richard Shaw. And amazing, again, I thought, I thought, coming twice and with the code, another interesting connection between the ephod and the Torah code, the Bible code. Now here, also what we did before was very interesting that Ooh. Now this is a very significant one, you guys, and we're going to see this. I've reworked this code um, and it says, he who researches codes merits. Right? And so that's a, that's a pretty long anomaly to appear in uh, the scripture with with uh, x amount of letters okay so this is strikingly significant right again we see the connection to the ephod right now he, he talks about kabbalah and we're not going to get into that that's a jewish thing and that's not something that we, we're really concerned in but the other um anomalies that he found there the, the the light of the secret right and the year that this code was found uh it will be distributed Right? All in this. And I've reworked this, and we're going to look at that in just a moment. He who researches codes, merits, and the light of secret with the code, and also the year when the one and Paul Kozim started working, 5736, 1976. Also, this is Kabbalah code. And this is Messiah code, as we saw. Also, interesting that in your fast, it will be this, this year, but again, very close comes the word Aifod, and again the year 5776, when the documentary came out strongly, and clearly shows this documentary, this come out, is really like the Aifod. 
How is the ifrut who gives the answer to the question and to darkness, really? And they're saying it's through the cause, what is going on? Then what we have here, similar idea. Here you have the word, the Bible code, not the Torah code. Bible code, which is Sofen Atanach, the year 5736. And this is really Bresvet and Pin Light. You can see uh, coming with the same thing. This is the Urim Vetumim. This is, this is exactly where the Ifud was. And Pin Light come together in the same place. Again, uh, Ifud come here, the one come here, Rips comes here. And this is also the year of the documentary 5775, it was these two years. Then again, skip, this is what the code is. But again, again, again we see the connection between the ephod and the codes. Unbelievable. And the skip. Then, another one, which we have also, very interesting, you have your code to our, to our code. And then the ephod, the ephod, three times. Huh? Then, going on, you have ears is in Hebrew, really, but this is Rips and Mefaneach Sofen, who, who breaks the codes, so desifying the codes. And again, the Ifat come here also. So this is what Rips really did, so Mefaneach Sofen. So as you can see there, it's, there's, a, there's definitely a connection to uh, the Ifat. He's got cerebral codes on it, but I want to transition over to um, where where I uh, also worked that very same code and found even more information. And you could do the same thing, you guys. Um, that's how I kind of got started doing this, is I followed Rabbi Glazerson in very intensely and reproduced every single code that he did and and would rework them um to to this extent to you know it was a lot of things there that i found that he doesn't even talk about in um his video on it so this is a very same code um actually i take that back uh this is another this is actually another one um my apologies this is called the bible he encoded this is not um I do have the, the, the code where he says, um, he who researches codes merits. I also have that one. For some reason, I picked this one to show you guys because it was annotated. But this is an actual a, another, the Bible he encoded. And again, we can see the connection to the ephod. The ephod mentioned several times. As a matter of fact, this is where the ephod is created um, in the Torah. And it runs right through the center part of this um uh some of the some of the verses that stand out like this one right here kodesh uh kodesh kodeshim wa'el yahua vayit dabarim yahua it, it it literally says these are the most holy things of yod he vav he right so what are we talking about? We're talking about codes and the breastplate and, and things like that. These are holy things. This is not just some novelty, you guys, uh, and to take lightly. And, and again, I want to stress, when you start searching codes and you start tapping into the spirit realm like this, you may draw sharks in. You may draw in some, some things that come and test you in your life, just like Job was tested, right? Um, but I would encourage you to endure uh, those those testings, right? And and not give up. The fact that you're being tested is a signal to you that the enemy wants to stop you, right? He wants to put an end to it. He don't want you to come to the truth. And, I, and we're going to get to that in just a minute, especially when we read what it says in Isaiah 30, right? That they're going to come a time where you'll hear the voice, that, that still small voice from the Father say, go here and go there, right? How do you test that? I've seen a lot of people say, God told me this and God told me that, especially when it comes to rapture and all those kinds of things, and it never happens, right? Very rarely has anybody told me, thus saith yod vav or thus saith God, 
and and that thing happened. It has happened before. I had a prophet that prophesied a lot of things in my life, especially the birth of my three sons. And he did it, you know, a year and several months before the first one was born. Right. So there are people that have that 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 uh, prophetic voice and say and say the things that the father tells them to say. But how do we test that? Right. The ephod of the modern day, the codes, we can test all things, you guys. By the way, the Bible interprets itself. I think the primary purpose that the codes are there is because the, the, the Bible interprets itself. It doesn't need my opinion about this or that. And again, you know, when I was talking the other day about the calendar, I didn't have a dog in the fight. It didn't matter to me which was right. I just wanted to know the truth. And I would follow that truth, right? So I use the, the the codes to help me reconcile that because there's there's when you when you come to a fork in the road and it's not just a fork it's it's four or five ways you can go like with the calendar which way is right which way is wrong how do we know the codes are can can rectify that okay so in this we can see all of you know the words here the word computer is here in the plain text. Urum and Thurum, you see Urum at the top, Thurum, and it runs right through the bottom there. Um, we have the, with the phrase, read the character. What does that mean? Read the letter. Read the letter. Read the letters, right? We also have computer in an ELS in this, in this table as well, in the blue letters you see there. All right? He speaks in parables. Uh, and, and we have the phrase to search, and then it connects with the computer. So all this falling in a very small fate, uh, place is very significant, and it's telling us something. So for me, looking at all the codes, com comparing the ephod uh, to the Bible codes, I was convinced, right? Uh, you know, a lot of times I like to do two or three uh, codes on one topic, and, and I call it triangulating something. You don't want to just do one code on on a topic and, and leave it at that. You want to you want to find other codes that you can triangulate that same topic. So maybe phrase the the search term that you're looking for a little differently, right? Uh, for instance, like um, looking at some of these um, uh, eclipses and that we're about to go through. I I, I searched a handful of different um, you know access terms that seem to triangulate the same event. Does that make sense? That's what I mean by triangulating, okay, when, when you're searching codes. You need another witness. That's another way to put it. You, you need other witnesses in, in, you know, establishing a matter when you're searching something out. Everybody with me? All right. So, like I said before, um, especially if you guys know me and you know what's been going on in my life, the past couple of years have been hard. Uh, for, for a few years on my channel, I've been teaching people about the threshing floor or the, the furnace of affliction that would be coming and that we would all be tested. We would all be going on the, the, the um, you know, the threshing floor. Um, I got to be honest with you, at the time that I was saying that, I had no idea that I was going to be an example to everybody that I was teaching that to because um, quite frankly, the past couple of years have been very difficult for me. Um, you know, the, the, the ex that I, that, that I'm no longer with, um, try to destroy me, slandering me, uh, you know, a ministry that helped me get out of that. I, I, I literally went from the fire, uh, the pot to the flame. Okay. And so uh, same thing with, with that ministry, I, 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 I got involved with them and, and it was just bad for me. And slander happened, and it was just a mess. And so there were times, you guys, where I just wanted to give up. I, I, I didn't want to do YouTube no more. I didn't want to teach anymore. And it, it was it was like my spirit was broken. And, you know, the Father had to come along and pick me up and dust me off and say, no, you got to keep going. And so, you know, when I would cry out to him and when I would pray to him, um, there were times where, I would hear a still small voice go say, go here and go there. And so I want to take you to a, a, a passage in Isaiah 30 and share that with you because um, this really hit me. 
when, when I realized what was going on, right? So I'm just going to read it from the beginning, but it's really down down at the bottom where uh, the verse is that uh, is really impactful. But this is what it says, right? Woe to rebellious children, saith Yah, that take counsel, but not of me. Again, which voice are we listening to, right? And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk down, uh, that that walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked uh, at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust of, sh of the shadow of Egypt be your confusion, right? And I would see this in some of these false prophets that were coming along saying Donald Trump was going to do this and Donald Trump was going to do that. And you guys, y'all said, not one finger will I lift to stop what is about to happen. And he did what he said. But, but I'm witnessing all these people, Kat Kerr, Kat Kerr, one of the telling people that she would go into heaven and play checkers with Jesus. And Jesus told her all these secrets and she would proclaim these things and it never happened. Right. And, and there were literally hundreds of these people all over the Internet. Uh, uh, Hank Kuhneman, uh, even, you know, I hate to say this, Kenneth Copeland was another one. I counted 400 at that time that were saying all these bombastic, way out in left field things that I know the Father wasn't showing me. And I called him out on it. So I believe that's what he's talking about here. He, you know, you didn't hear nothing from me, right? For his princes were in zone, were at zone, and and his ambassadors came to Haines, and all were ashamed of the people that could not profit them, nor uh, be a help nor profit, but shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south and the land of trouble and anguish, from whence uh, come the young, uh, and old lion and the viper and the fiery flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon their shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to the people, uh, to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall uh, help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have cried concerning this. The strength is, is to sit still. Now go and write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying uh, children, children that will not hear the law of Yah, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us the right things, but speak unto us the smooth things, and this prophecy deceits. And that's what I witnessed these prophets doing. Get you out of the way and turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and say thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be unto uh, shall be to you as a as a breach ready to fall, swelling out, out on a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly. At an instant, and it shall break as the breaking of potter's vessels, and is broken into pieces. He shall not spare, so that he shall not be found in the bursting of the of its sherd to take fire from the hearth, or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith uh, Yahuwah Elohim, the Holy One of Israel: In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be, you be strengthened, and ye would not. All these ones that were wanting to go around saying all these things, instead of being quiet and being in a meditative place, they wouldn't hear the word of the Father. They wanted to preach smooth things, not the bad things, not the judgments that are coming upon the earth, but smooth things. But ye said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee. 
and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall the prudent be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon a, a mountain, as an ensign upon a hill. Here's where it gets really interesting. And therefore, wait upon, uh, therefore will you will wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore ye, uh, will he be exalted that he will have mercy upon you, for, you, for Yah is a Elohim of judgment. Blessed are those that wait for him. Sometimes we got to be quiet in our in our prayer and wait for him to, to respond. And that's what I mean about this ephod and using it as an ephod and listening in your prayer life. It's going to take a lot of that, you guys. There's a factor in searching codes that I cannot provide. I can teach you all the functions. I can teach you the, the, the biblical Hebrew, but I cannot teach you how to listen for the Father's voice. That is something you have to master yourself. And you have to master listening to your voice, to the enemy's voice, and, and discerning that bet but between what the Father's voice is. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay? I'm going home to something in this presentation here. Right? For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, and thou shalt weep no more. But he will be very gracious upon thee at the voice of thy cry, when he shall hear it. And he will answer thee. You hear what I'm saying? If you get into a prayer life and you seek the Father, he will answer you. But you got to be willing to hear him. And you got to be willing to let go of your voice, what you want to hear. And the enemy's voice, who will come with, to confuse you, and what the Father's saying. Understand? And though Yah will give you the bread of ad adversity and the water of affliction, ye shall not, uh, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes will see thy teachers, and thine ears will hear the word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. So he is telling you. You're going to see your teachers. And that don't mean just people teaching you something. That means lessons in life. Things in your life teaching you something. These adversities. The, the furnace of affliction coming from you here. And they're going to teach you these things. And you're going to listen to what he says. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, the Bible says the, the steps of the righteous are in, or, or ordained, meaning he's going to direct you. He's going to tell you, go this way, go that way. Stop here. Pay attention. He's going to direct you. You got to be able to hear him and not yourself and not the enemy. We got to block that out. And, and and hear his voice. Hear me? You hear what I'm saying? We got to get to that point. All right? And I think the codes are a tool to do that, that we can test the spirit. We can test what we're hearing. Father, is this you? If this is you, give me a sign. Show me something. Give me a word. Right? Only the Father can do that. The enemy can't, he can't show you something that's concealed in a 3,000-year-old text. He doesn't have access like that. This is how we can know this is him that's revealing this to us. Everybody follow. <laughs> Ye shall defile also the covering of the graven image of silver and the ornaments of thy molten images of gold. Thou cast them away as a menstruous cloth and say to it, get thee hence. So we're gonna we're gonna do away the, with the idol worship and all the things that that hold us bound that that we can't hear him because he's not gonna deal with us when we're holding on to these things, right? But he will. He will lead us if we cry out to him. All right. So I, I just wanted to to share that with, to bring that what I'm about to show to you home because it came a couple of times. Early first 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 happened to me was when my first wife left me and she left me for another man and took my three sons and I was devastated and I almost gave this up. 
and it was very early on. This is like 2013, somewhere around there. And I was, like I said, devastated. It, my life was over. And um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I want you to go here and I want you to look for your name at this skip. And I clearly heard that. And so what did I do? I went there. And so I want to go there with you. I haven't shared this really on YouTube or any, anywhere like that. And by the way, I was led by the Holy Spirit today um, that, that uh, we're probably going to post this particular class on, on YouTube. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why he wanted me to do that. One is because um, we need to get more students in this class. Um, and I think it will bless um, I think this will speak to people uh, with the possibilities of searching codes because, again, this is an ephod, and this is a holy work, and there is an almighty Elohim on the throne that communicates with us, and we can test his word in this. So the very first time he did this to me, and he will do this with you as well, when you start searching codes, and then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for your name, Right? I've searched some 400 plus names already, and I could have picked any one of those to do this demonstration with you with because they're all just as unique and just as profound. OK, so when you get to the point where you're searching your name and, and you're praying, Father, show me in your word, show me where I am in your word. One thing I've noticed a lot of times it has something to do with a, a very significant scripture to you personally. And when I was a kid. My grandfather gave my brother and myself an encyclopedia uh, volumes of the Bible. It was children's stories of the Bible. And one of my very favorite places to read was the prophet Jeremiah. And the reason why that stood out to me, because I was around the same age, 12 years old, 11 years old, uh, when Yah started speaking to Jeremiah. Okay, so this spoke to me very profoundly. So I hear the Holy Spirit say to me one day, Go here and go there and look for your name at this skip. And so this is where he took me. I want to share that with you right now. And then we're going to look at one more. Same kind of thing uh, that he did to me. It's, it's really happened twice. And the second time I got a witness, I actually had Scott work that code with me. As soon as I got it, I said, Scott, Holy Spirit just gave me something. I want you to work. I want you to work it. And so I have another witness on that. And he did. And we're going to look at that one as well. But the very first one I want you to see is this one right here. Now, this one is very profound because of the skip. It's a very small skip. It's very reminiscent to me to Isaiah 53 in, in the code that, that I've shown many times about Yeshua is my name is the access term. And it's a skip of 20. And we can see on the um, the data printout on that particular code that it's in the hundreds of billions to one. It's, it's very rare. You're more likely to be struck by lightning every day of your life than something like that to happen. That's how profound and astronomical that is. So the fact that he takes me to this place, which is only two more letters more than the Yeshua code with my name there and all the detail that was here. I mean, I found a lot. You got to feel my kids. My mom is here. My I'm here. My first, middle, and last name is all here in a very tight configuration. And we're not going to go through all the um, anomalies in this. I'll just point out a few. Um, my name, Jonathan, appears right here. But also, Matthew, which can be spelled a couple of different ways depending on the, the T that you use in Hebrew, and both are here. One goes this way in the purple, Matthew, and the other Matthew is standing straight upon my name right there, Matthew. And then my last name, tightly snugged against my first name, runs right up this way, right here. It's a very tight configuration, right? 
Uh, my mother's name, Bonnie, appears in the blue with the word mom, vertical right there. All right, and, and not only that, Ima or uh, Ami, my mother. Remember when you put a yod on the end? It means my, my mother, my mo mother, mom, Bonnie. Uh, you know, even further down, uh, there was information on my kids. There, you know, the, the fact that I discovered Yah's name uh, in my ministry. You know, the question, who is yod heh -Vav -Heh, appears on my, my uh, table. It's a question I was asking myself, you guys, several years ago when I'm looking at the Hebrew text and I keep seeing yod heh -Vav -Heh, every place where it says Lord and God, I started asking myself, who is yod heh -Vav -Heh? It's the name of the Father, right? What, what a profound revelation. <laughs> it's in my table. Right? Right there. So, uh, you know, so I'm spending all these hours with the Father in this ephod mode, prayerful mode, searching codes mode. And he's revealing all these details about me in this very narrow strip in one chapter. And I want to take you to where that is. Any guesses of where this is? Remember what I said about my very favorite book when I was a kid, Jeremiah? That's where it is. And not only that, it's uh, it's literally the first part of Jeremiah. I'm gonna read what it says, and this is this is where my name, first, middle, and last name, all come together. And it says, to whom the word of Yahuwah came into the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. Remember what I told you? It was about 2013. My wife had left me and I was feeling like this tall. I was feeling bad. I, I was in a bad place. Okay. And I, I was about to give this up. And I needed encouragement. Or I wouldn't have been doing this. And this is what the Holy Spirit gave me. This is what he said. It also, it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, and, and carrying unto the carrying away of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Then the word of Yahuwah came unto me saying, and this is where my name is. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then said I, ah, Adonai Elohim, behold, I cannot speak before I am a child. But Yah said unto me, Say not that I'm a child, for thou shalt go forth to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And, and at this time, you guys, he'd already commanded me to go forth and speak and be saying these things. It'd be very profound things. 2013, 2014, the codes were predicting a collision between the, the comet Sidon Spring and Mars. And I was seeing a code that said collision. And lo and behold, that's exactly what ha happened. But he wanted me to stand on that faith and proclaim these things before it happened. And it did. And it happened over and over and over again. And guys, you know, when, when we went from um, the Pope that resigned to the current Pope right now, we had like two days where we had 70 names to go through to figure out who the next Pope was going to be. And we were working on codes to try to figure that out. We didn't get the name off the bat, but we did find that he would be a Jesuit. First time ever we've had a Pope that's a Jesuit. The codes was spot on with that. And that he would be a black Pope. 
Now, at the time, I thought it would be the skin color of his skin. Later, I learned that a black pope is the Jesuit pope. That's exactly what it is. The codes confirm that, you know, before he was even named. All right. I could go on and on and on, you guys, where the codes were, were integral. And again, this is not a crystal ball. That's not what I'm trying to teach you here. This is an E5 where deep and hidden things can be revealed to you by the by the creator of the universe. And he is the only one that knows the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. It's not me. Right? So I'm in this process where he's revealing this to me. The, the very favorite book from all the Bible, Jeremiah, even to this day, Jeremiah is my favorite book. That's where he encodes me right there. One place. There, there are several places he's encoded me. And you'll see the same thing as well. Especially if you're in a low place and you're crying out to the Father and he he he, he feels compelled to, to, to strengthen your faith. He'll reveal mighty things like this. And, and what a boost it is for you when you see something like that, you guys. And so a lot of information there, uh, you know, about my life there. And so I see that as a confirmation that his word's true. And we can trust his, uh, we can trust his voice, especially when we can test all things, right? So now I want to take you to about two years ago. Um, I had just left Hawaii, um, left a, a very, very trying marriage that I was in where, where I, there, there, I felt like there was abuse. Okay. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That's not important. And I'm not here to slander anybody, but uh, things were bad for me. And, and many people could see that. And, um, you know, that transpired in the last two years of my life and the hard times that I've had to go through with this person, right? So there was another time where uh, I felt this, there was this dark cloud over me, especially when there were these accusations and these horrible um, slanders, things written about me on, on the internet and all that. And again, when you're doing codes like this, you can expect some heat, okay? And so my life should be an example, right? Um, and I'm no better than you, right? Uh, I'm not somebody special. I'm, I'm I'm no different than anybody here, right? But when you when you tap into the spiritual realm, and you start con conversing with the with the ruach, and he's revealing deep and hidden things. Watch what happens around you. Pay attention to that, right? And be prayerful, and, and don't let the enemy catch you slipping, right? Because he wants to sift you like wheat. Uh, like grain, just like he said to uh, Yeshua said to, to Peter, right? He wants to sift you. So uh, again, I was in this place where where I was feeling um, abandoned, basically. Uh, you, you know, uh, the, the things that were being said about me, the the, the result of that was people treated me like I had to, uh, the plague, and they avoided me, and. Uh, it was very hurtful, especially people I had relationships with over many years. Um, and they certainly walked away from me, abandoned me. And uh, I could see my life paralleling se several people in the Bible where this had happened. And so I was searching for the Father. I was trying to hear his voice. And I cried out to him one day, and I heard his voice say, <clears throat> go here and go there again. And what he had said to me was, Go search my servant, Jonathan. And so I want to reconstruct that with you right here, just like in real time, how that went down. For me, in real time, I hear the voice, I come to, come to the computer, and this is what I see, blank page. This is the, the, the starting point when you started a code. And I simply went to the whole Bible, and I put in what he said, 
my servant, Jonathan. And the way you spell that is a good deed. And then my name, Yosef, my servant, whoop, whoop. my servant, Jonathan. That's what I heard. We're going to search all possible skips. And, and by the way, we'll get into other uh, another teaching on how you can you can arrange your different search parameters right here. But for, for the sake of this and how this transpired for me, I went to all possible skips and waited for the result in the computer. And this is what happened. You see down at the bottom, we've already got a result right here. And we got a note. So two occurrences where this is encoded. So what I heard the Holy Spirit say is encoded. And so what I, my natural process in this is I usually go to the smallest skip. Okay. And you'll learn that uh, <clears throat> these are more significant. Not that they're not all significant, but the smaller skip is is generally the um what you know, and I'm going off of methodology the rabbis established that the smallest skip is the more significant, right? So I went there. And so this is how it looks. When you first get there, you might want to change that that window color. You don't want to burn your eyes looking at a code long time under a you know, a white background. So that's another thing you need to know is looking at these codes over long periods of time, you can ruin your eyes. So you always want to change that to make it a little more muted so you can look at this. So um, that's the, the, the anomaly that happened. And so from there, um, you can take it and you, uh, you could put a row skip on that. So it's at a skip now of 5296 but I simply went to the key up here and put a row skip on it I think it was a row skip of two and um, this is what I got here and so what I'm showing here is a more advanced um, example of that very same word of the very same code my servant Jonathan with an extension. That's another thing I'm going to teach you. When when you see a sequence of letters, you're going to look uh, at the sequence above and the sequence below to look for any extensions. Okay, and we're going to talk about extensions at another time. Um, but that that's also how you can you can find. Um, so you got a baseline, and then if you see an extension below it or above it. It, it extends what you have. So my original code that I found here was my servant, Jonathan. But with the letters here, it adds, it adds a few things to it. And so what we have here is my servant, Jonathan, standing before them. So my servant, Jonathan, standing before them, right? And then, and by the way, I had Scott work this, this code. I do have his version as well that I'll show you. <clears throat> My middle name, full spelling, vertical as well. My name also in the plain text, Jonathan here. With yod -Heh vav -Heh, vertical, but also horizontal. It comes together on itself on the same letter, yod -Heh vav -Heh, kind of. Does a 90 degree angle. So that kind of stands out to me when you see clustering of terms like this, especially when it has a verse that runs through it, it seems to be significant. It stands out, right? So when I found uh, my middle name, Matthew, here, I look for extensions on both sides to see if there's a phrase or something like that. Because sometimes you'll have a phrase, you'll have a long extension of something being said so you want to look at the same skip and at this at this point it's one you see there's no row skip between it so it's it's every letter and so <clears throat> what i found was an extension that essentially said who is the fire in the sons of matthew 
who is the fire in the sons of Matthew? I've had, I have three sons. Vertical here with um, some verses that run through that seem to be significant. We're going to read those in just a moment. The codes, the codes, which are part of my life. This is this is who I am, right? Um, and plays a role in this very part of my existence. <clears throat> The year, the current year is here. I recently re reworked this. Uh, there are previous years in this, but the current year is also here in the purple there uh, with, the, with the word otiote, which means letters or signals. It also means um, signs. It's a very, it's a versatile word there. Um, we have the word uh, for redeemed. In the blue, that runs across. But also tamim, which means innocent. Right here. Now, this is what Stan stood out to me. And again, when, when you're searching codes like this and, and the father's confirming something, you don't want to just look at the ELS. You want to look line by line by line and look at all the verses that are running through the matrix that you're looking at. And so... This is what stood out to me right here. We're going to go there now. And that is First Chronicles. Chapter 16. Right? Chapter 16, running right through. Right through there. This is what it says. Verse 21. And he had suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Saying, touch not my anointed. And do not my prophets no harm. Sing unto you, Yah, all the earth. And show forth from the, from, uh, show forth from day to day his salvation. Declaring his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among the nations. For great is Yah and greatly to be praised. And he also is to be feared above all Elohims. For all the Elohims of the people are idols. And I don't like to use the word gods, you guys, and we'll talk about that at some other time. For all the Elohims of the people are idols. For the Adonai made the heavens. Glory and honor are his presence. Strength and gladness are his place. And then we have right here with um, um, an anomaly that's vertical, which, which says, who is the, the Ruach? And then it has Elohim connected to that. But also my servant, remember, Ubadi, my servant. Right? Look on the other side of this. This is really, really interesting. Here, because I've witnessed this in my life, verse 21, uh, chapter 21, verse 1, and you guys need to know who your adversary is. Look what happens here in my own life. And then Satan stood up against Israel. <clears throat> I saw this happen in my life where Satan stood up against me, made all these accusations in, in my life, and therefore I had to go through the fire. Had to go through the threshing floor, right? It happened to Job. This is, matter of fact, it's exactly what happened to Job. And it will happen to you, <laughs> right? Can you imagine the father saying, have you considered my servant, Scott Bunnell? Have you considered my servant, Michael McNair or Vicki Dawson? It could happen to every one of us, you guys, where, where you come under attack. You come under fire and you have to endure, right? It's not easy to be in that place. You know where I found comfort? Right here. Right here in his in his word. Not just when we talk about codes, we're talking about his word, his Bible. There's no light thing. That's where I found comfort was in his word. Hearing his voice. 
coming up alongside of me and putting his arm around me and saying, it's going to be all right. I'm with you. I have not forsaken you. It's the same with every one of you. And, and no matter what you're going through, every trial in your life, the Father has your back. And there's confirmation in his word. Not just in the plain text, but encoded there as well. And it, it, it's that's what I'm trying to drive home to you. This is this is very personalized to me. I'm using myself and as the example to teach as a teaching opportunity to you. But the same thing applies to you as well. Uh, there are deep and hidden things uh, he wants to reveal to you. Things that will encourage you. Things that will cause you to soar like an eagle, right? Um, you know, the enemy plays tricks on us. And, and uh, you know, the common the common theme with a, with a lot of people, uh, even though they may in their public life and on social media portray themselves as being some strong person, in reality, they're, they're troubled. Does God really hear me? Does he even know who I am? They're questioning this, right? That's the enemy that does that. He wants you to believe you're not important. You don't, you don't really exist in his eyes. You're nobody, right? And I got news for you. You are somebody. He, he formed you in your mother's womb. He knew your name before you were born, okay? And he has a purpose for you. And so um, it's my goal for you to see that in yourself in this, in this class, that he has a purpose for you. And if you're here right now or, or going to be here, um, this may be a, a place where you shine, right? And so that's my, my hope and my prayer for each one of you is um, that he would reveal himself like he did to me. Um, and again, you guys, I wouldn't wish what I'm going through and what I've been through on anybody, my worst enemies, right? And so if my life can be an example to encourage you, then so be it, right? Many of you can, can relate, some of you can't relate, but whatever you are on the spectrum, um, he's got a purpose for you and a plan for you. He has not forgot you. And you are a part of his kingdom. So um, that is how, uh, the, you know, the coach can be used as an ephod. And, and that's just the, a small example. Um, you know, there have been many other things that I've heard him say to me, and I went and found it encoded. And, and some of those codes, you know, come out on YouTube, like the Eclipse stuff and, and things that we've been looking at here recently. That, that all didn't come from Jonathan. That came from me hearing him say, go here and go there. Right. So um, that's the possibility for each, for each one of you in, in doing this. And uh, by the way, that's what I got for you today. Uh, so, uh, you know, I really hope and pray that this blessed you, um, encouraged you, inspired you in, in you know, your, your walk in, in this journey, doing this. Uh, I want to take a moment before we close it out to, to um, take it to discussion. Any questions or anything you guys want to say, um, I want to give you an opportunity to do that before we pray out today. Anybody? Don't be shy. I have a question, but I don't want to take up all your time asking questions. No worries. No. It, so, it, so when you see those Jewish, uh, those those Hebrew characters, how do you know? It means this in English. Like, does it translate it for you? How will I know when I see, like, Sita? How will I know that that means Sita kind of thing, you know? Well, you can use a trans, um, um, you know, and I'm going to show oh, you okay. how, to do, how to do that. Yeah. Like, again, like I've told, okay. told several of you on the phone, you don't have to be fluent in Hebrew to do this. We're going to learn a baseline of Hebrew, which is going to help you, but... We're going to rely a lot on translators and technology. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yes. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to be fluent in in Hebrew to do this. This is this is why this is so amazing that it's it's really any. I'm not again. I'm not the sharpest tool in the in the shed, right? I'm not fluent in Hebrew. I, I know enough to hear conversations and I know what's being said, but I'm very much like a child in the sense that. I haven't learned how to master that language and I'm speaking it fluently. Okay. So, um, you know, no misunderstanding in, in what you're learning here, you guys, I'm, I'm teaching you everything that I've known. 
and, and explaining to you, you don't have to be fluent in this for the Holy Spirit to reveal. Matter of fact, Yeshua, it reminds me of a verse Yeshua said, Father, I thank you for revealing these things to the babes, to the children, and not to the learned, right? Those that have mastery, right? And are, are, have degrees. He reveals these to the children, and that's what we are. Okay, so he, he's going to do the work in that sense. And that's why we got to be able to hear his voice and distinguish that from our own and from the enemy, right? He's going to reveal these things. Michelle, did you have a question? I saw your hand come up there briefly. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you. This has been an amazing class. Again, I just love this, that, I, that we're back in real, real great class and very basic and straightforward and i'm totally blessed and i also have a question because there's two people i know one is my daughter and another is a former student and they want to join mm -hmm. uh they want to join school so uh so they just email you at codesearcheroutlook.com yeah. yeah and th that's all they gotta do and we'll talk on the phone and we'll get them in yeah okay all right i'm trying you. to make this doable and accessible to many as many people as i can you guys uh, because uh, we're in critical times right now. And um, yeah. I'm not the only one that's supposed to be doing this, really. It, it, matter of fact, it's it's actually too much for one person to take on, um, to be searching all the codes. And I'm, that's why I'm thankful to see other, other people that are searching codes. There should be an army doing this, right? There should be... A, everybody should be, you know, this intimate in, into the word and have access to it. So... Um, that that's why we're doing this. So just tell them to email me, and I'll talk to them on the phone. We'll get them. We'll get them into the class, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have a comment, Jonathan. Yeah, brother. Um, I just want to apologize to everybody that um I I wasn't able to demonstrate tonight, and I'm glad you picked it up the way you did, Jonathan, because I'm I've just been ill. I woke up last night severely ill, and um, it's all I can do right now is just to even participate. So I'm just grateful to you, who is that I'm here tonight and amongst all of you. And and what a great class, like Michelle said. Um, um, great, just great teaching and and great subject matter. Um, next week, uh, not only will I be ready to teach you who are willing, but um, I'll have a couple awesome, awesome Bible codes to share, if that's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, I may, I'll probably be sharing them on my platform for, so for those of you who are following along with that, I'll be putting them up more than likely. They're just too awesome to hold on to. <laughs> yeah. So you guys keep Scott in prayer. Um, he's been dealing with uh, 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 kidney issues for a couple of years now. And uh, that's, that's, that's really hard um yeah on a person when you got to go through dialysis and all that kind of stuff so um, you know things like that is what i'm talking about that, that these kind of trials that we go through when we yeah. start tapping in into the spirit realm right and uh, i'm not saying yeah, this so what happened to everybody by the way i'm just saying these you know the enemy is going to come at us in certain certain ways and uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and, and and that's why i pray a covering over each one of you um, you know, every time we come to class and every day that I'm thinking about you, we're praying over you. Okay. So, uh, and I'm thankful for people like Margie. Uh, apparently Margie is a prayer warrior. Uh, we need that in this field and yeah. in what we're doing. Yes. Keep a hedge Thank around you. us. It's Scott's Thank going you. through things too, right? Um, I'm not the only one, um, uh, anybody really, um, online teaching like this and teaching to, you know, deep truth like that will if you look really carefully they're going through something really really profound in their life uh, that's just the way it is right yeah and, and same thing would happen with the disciples with yeshua um trials and and, and tribulations come upon us when uh when we're living this life and we're, we're doing his will right anybody else got any questions or things they want to say before we close You guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for, for being here today and, and um, 
hanging out and learning and uh, being a part of this this community. Um, I, I believe y'all's got something in, important and, and very profound he wants to do in your life. And so I pray over you. I'm thankful for you. And um, I'm excited for you to, to be in this class. Let me pray for you. And listen, we're going to meet the same time next week. Um, we're, it seems to be a better time based on where everybody is um, to, to do this. So um, same link and everything. All right. Abba, you, um, Father, I'm just so thankful for you, each and every person that's here that you have brought to this class. And I just pray a covering over them right now in the mighty name of Yeshua, that you keep them covered in your in your name and in the blood of the Messiah, that you keep them protected, that you would dispatch angels around them and their family, Father, that you would let not the enemy come against them and harm them in any way. Father, bring them back at the appointed time. Keep them safe. I ask this in Yeshua's time, uh, name. Amen. All right, you guys. I love you guys. Have a good week. Uh, keep up what's going on in um, Discord. I'll try to be a little more active this week over there and, and uh, talk to you. If anybody needs anything, just message me. You got my phone number. You can call me if anything you want to talk about, any concerns or uh, questions or anything like that. Just holler at me. All right. Shalom to you. I love you. Be blessed. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, absolutely. Much have to all of you. Thank, Thank you for you the prayers. Me. Thank you. We love you, Scott. I love you guys. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.